Hey guys, I've got some awesome news. Today is actually sunny. Yesterday was sunny, looks like tomorrow's gonna to be sunny as well. And what's more, I've been out at Rotorua riding some of that hero dirt on this beast. Now what is it you say? Well it's the white E180 SMX, and I've been lucky enough to be given this thing for a few days to play on. What is it? Well it's a big travel sled really. 180 up the front, 170 rear, it's got some Zebs up the front, a RockShox Super Deluxe Select um, 170 on the rear, it's a mullet, it's got a pretty good spec, GX drivetrain, um, code R brakes, big rotors, 220 front, 200 rear, so should be able to stop. It's, uh, what else has it got on? Some DT Swiss wheels, I think it's got White's own dropper post on it, and um, 750 watt hour battery, and it comes with the new Bosch uh, smart system. And to be honest, this is the first bike I've actually reviewed with this, so I'm interested to see what that's like to use. Uh, what do we think of the looks of the bike? Well, it's I quite like it actually. It's not black, it's actually like a gun metal gray. I guess we should probably talk about what's going on down here, um, because it looks quite different down here. It's one of the things about the white bikes is they rotate the motor to allow the battery to effectively go underneath it. And the idea of this is to get the center of um, gravity or the weight as low down and centered as possible. Um, one of the things I love about e-bikes Everyone always complains about the weight, or some people do. I actually like having a big lump of weight right where my feet are, and it creates stability whether you're jumping or just flying over tree roots. So I actually really, really like it. So be interested to see whether you actually notice the difference with that. Um, but that's, that's basically why it looks like this. It does, for some, you may say she looks like she's pregnant. <laughs> um, so I guess if you're the sort of person who wants a stealth looking e-bike that people have to look at it two or three times to try and work out whether it's an e-bike, this is probably not the one for you. But if you're like full fat, big battery, big days out, big sends, then well, maybe this bike is for you. Anyway, let's take this thing out to Rotorua and show you what it's like on a bit of that hero dirt. All right, let's start with a trail called Gonagutta. Many of you may think, well, that's not the start of Gonagutta, but, uh, yeah, I started at the top and then I realised I was talking a whole load of garbage, which you guys probably are very used to. Uh, in fact, I was going to start with Corridor, because I haven't ridden that. In fact, I started making a Trail Forks video on it, only to find that the uh, new section was actually closed today. So anyway, Gone and Gut is a pretty cool track. In fact, it has been a slow start, because there was a, on the jump section there was a tree down. And uh, I nearly hit it doing the jump, so anyway, I managed to break some branches and clear it to make it safe for the next rider. But anyway, back to the bike, the white E180. Uh, this is a mullet and uh, the super slack, 63.2, which was what I had to go and stop and check because I almost thought that can't be right. But sure enough, 63.2, and that's in the high setting. I think it's 62.7 in the low setting. So this thing's effectively a chopper, but it is quite confidence inspiring. As you can see, it's a bit wet and sloppy. Although I do have some amazing news to tell you, it's actually a sunny day today. And I, you, if you live in the North Island, you know how rare they've been this year. So I'm absolutely ecstatic to be out on this thing on a beautiful blue sky day. If you ever get the chance to come to New Zealand, You've got to ride here in Rotorua. It's just a little piece of paradise, eh? I'm not sure how long the dropper is on this, but it feels pretty long. Certainly can get well out the way. Again, I'd like to, I'm the sort of rider, even a little climb like that, I'll flick it up, have a little sit down, even just for a few pedals, and then whack it back down again. And sometimes I think I use the dropper post more than I use the gear lever. See, I'm back down again now. actually got this thing for a few days so should be able to do quite a bit of testing with it all right and back out into the open I always have a little cry when the trees are cut down but it's all part of riding in a commercial forest 
Okay, so first impressions, uh, I really, really enjoyed it actually. I'd probably describe this bike as stable. It's a long travel, slack bike, fairly long, and it just rails over all those tree roots, drops. You, you, at no point do you think you're gonna get thrown off the bike. It's probably not the lightest, poppiest, most nimble bike I've ever ridden, but as I say, I guess it's, it's a big travel bike. That's kind of what you would expect, but I really, really did enjoy riding it. Now one thing I um, didn't mention before when we were talking about batteries and motors and things is that the battery will drop out through the bottom here um, and one of the things that White claims is that this tube is a, obviously a complete round tube here and that that makes the bike stiffer and stronger than a lot of the e-bikes who have batteries that drop out through the bottom and don't have a complete um, solid down tube. Don't know if it's true, couldn't tell when riding, but anyway, that's what it is. The other thing, of course, we were talking about was the Bosch Smart System. Now, I must admit, the first time when they launched this and I, ha I saw it, I thought, oh, Bosch, that's a little bit ugly. You could have done better. Um, when you actually look at it in the flesh, it's actually not that bad and I must admit um, I, I quite like it now but initially when I saw pictures of it I thought it looks a bit ugly. Um, now for the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you you may have noticed there is no screen on this bike there is no display and that's deliberate you can add one if you really want one but the reality is you don't actually need one um, and I quite like it like this and I think actually if I got a new bike with a Bosch motor I might even just do this myself it tells you how much battery you've got left and it tells you what mode you're in and if you want to know all the other things like how far you've been your cadence how high a hill you went up and all that you can link it with your phone. I always ride with my phone anyway, and it's, I think it's called the Flow app. And you can even download maps to Strava. And you can, the other thing that's quite cool is you can even play with the power settings um, and like in turbo and things like that. A couple of the, there's a couple of the power settings I think you can fiddle with. And so you can make it stronger or, or lower depending on what you want. And I think that's really pretty cool. All right, I think uh, like all e-bike tests, um, they have to have some jumps thrown in. So anyway, why don't we try Katori jumps and see how we get on with that. Okay, so this is a little set of dirt jumps. Uh, I always find this quite challenging on a big e-bike. So I figured this would be a good first test. Okay, all right, pedal. Okay, we'll take that, we'll take that. Not perfect, but for a first run, I'll take that. Whew. All right, let's do this uh, set of jumps here. Oh, must admit, the first attempt, I cased this one on the end, which was a little bit nerve wracking. Oh, I nearly cased it again, but we'll take it. All right, well, I've got to go up and do a few jumps, so let's just try a little steep uphill. A little bit of a technical up and over. Uh, no problem at all. Not a big climb, but a good test. All right, gonna do the bottom section now. Now, some of you will say, didn't you miss a jump? And you go, well, yes, I did. But I think the thing is, when you're out in the forest on your own, I haven't seen anybody out here, I think I should probably be a little bit sensible. Oh, I don't know if that's sensible. All right, we're dropping into here into a track called uh, Tu Teata. This is the bottom section anyway. And uh, yeah, a bit of tech. It's a pretty cool track, haven't ridden this for a while. This bike, I imagine, I feel quite confident jumping it. Saying that, I must admit, I've been riding around the forest for hours and I haven't seen another living soul. And then you start to get that paranoia that um, what happens if I go down here, will anybody ever find my body? So once you get that thoughts into your head, you're pretty much screwed. So haven't done any seriously big jumps on it, but this with a sort of 180, 170 travel and a big slack head angle, I imagine you could go huge on it if you've got the got the guts for it, which maybe today is not the day, but I have got it for a few days, so who knows. Very reassuring, I guess, on this uh, techie stuff. Feels very confident. Um, I quite like the tyre choice. Got Asa Guys Wide Tread 2.5. Seems like a pretty good choice to me. Pretty good grip. As I say, it's, uh, it's got some road rears hero dirt today. A little bit wet, but go the, that line. Whoa! Yeah. Haven't done that for a while. That was a drop. Okay, all good though. The bike just said no worries. Pretty nicely spec bike. This one, it's, it's, it's not the top of the line, but 
for the money it's pretty impressive so GX drivetrain uh, Kodar brakes so a good rock shock suspension so yeah I must admit it, 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 it handles really well the suspension's been really great so far didn't have to do a lot to set this one up which was cool oh it's a fun track Wee! three routes galore bit of a wall ride bit more tree roots Way, that's not what you want I was going to yeah I was going to bunny hob that log but I uh, decided against it they're not normally a big puddle there anyway on we go one thing I have noticed on the display here you can see that it's got two green bars and a white bar and I think the white bar must come on at 10% so I guess that means it's just come on so I guess that means we've got 50% so I guess it's a lot better than only having 20% increments you've effectively therefore got 10% increments which I think is, a, is, is quite cool okay for those of you who know Rotorua you'll think this is not Rotorua and you're right this is Tauranga this is Oropi Grove and it's a nice little steep technical routey climb now a 180 170 super slack bike typically you would never go up this hill but of course on an e-bike no issues at all in fact all the other cyclists have been taking the long bypass because they don't want to ride up there anyway sweet as all right i really really enjoyed um jumping this thing there is one issue though i, I do have um with making these videos people often say oh I'll come along and I'll, I'll film with you but in my experience um, people get really really bored i set up cameras i ride past them i set the cameras up again i ride past them i try and get lots of little shots to make the video more interesting and most people find that incredibly boring and I feel under pressure not to do it. So I tend to do the videos on my own. The downside is I come up to jumps that I know I can clear, but then I think, well, there's no one around and I lose my bottle and it's not my bike. And so, yeah, sometimes I end up and it annoys me because I think, oh, I should show this bike doing bigger stuff. So anyway, we didn't do huge jumps, but the jumps we did, it was really good fun. In fact, I think this thing could go seriously huge um, if you were so inclined to, to, you know, it's got a lot of travel, very slack, very stable just go for it. Uh, should you buy this bike? It's a good question. Um, I'm going to tell you one thing that may make um, help that decision for you. This bike, um, as I say, uh, electric bike rider rang me up and asked me if I wanted to, to try it out, but I believe they're retailing this for 10 grand, just shy of at the moment. And if you think about what's on this bike, it's got you know, RockShox suspension, it's got a GX drivetrain, it's got code brakes, 750 watt hour battery, the new Bosch smart system. That seems damn good value for money, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty impressed by that. If you look at some of the other bikes I've reviewed recently uh, with eye-watering price tags, I know 10 grand's a lot of money and I'm not belittling that, but you know, for what it is, that seems, that seems pretty damn good to me. Now, I must admit, I should make a confession. Electric Bike actually, uh, they said to me they had a they've got a, um, the 160 version as well and that was in a medium and that probably would have been a slightly better fit for me but me being me I really really wanted to take out the big boy um, so this one's a large I think the reach is 483 um, so it's, I'm probably about a 463 reach so it's only just slightly bigger than, than what I'm used to um, but yeah, I just wanted to take this thing out and I really had a lot of fun. Anyway, um, you know the story. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, that really helps me out, helps me get more bikes. I'd love it if you did that. Thumbs up, like. Um, leave me a comment, let me know. Have you got one of these? Do you enjoy it? What do you think of it? And um, if not, we'll see you on the next one. There's nothing like peer pressure, eh? That was cool. Man. Oh, I wasn't going to do that otherwise. Yeah.